Hi there and welcome. This is Book of Mormon Reader and I welcome you to our show today. I appreciate you spending the time with me and I appreciate your support as we work our way through the Book of Mormon, sharing my personal scripture study time with you. And I thought I would make it a little different by going backwards instead of forwards. Uh, that's something I haven't seen done before. And of course, by the time it's all done and archived, it'll be in order. But such as it is, I'm going backwards and we're doing 3rd Nephi 20, which has some really very interesting things that I have never really considered before and so sometimes we can get a little confused by scriptures but hopefully today I, there's been a few things that I've studied that were quite interesting here we go the Book of Mormon third Nephi chapter 20 and it came to pass that he commanded the multitude that they should cease to pray and also his disciples and he commanded them that they should not cease to pray in their hearts and he commanded them that they should arise and stand up upon their feet and they arose up and stood upon their feet and it came to pass that he brake bread again and blessed it and gave it to the disciples to eat and when they had eaten he commanded them that they should break bread and give it unto the multitude and when they had given unto the multitude he also gave them wine to drink and commanded them that they should give unto the multitude now there had been no bread neither wine brought by the disciples neither by the multitude but he truly gave unto them bread to eat and also wine to drink and he said unto them he that eateth this bread eateth of my body to his soul and he that drinketh of this wine drinketh of my blood to his soul and his soul shall never hunger nor thirst but shall be filled now when the multitude had all eaten and drunk behold they were filled with the spirit and they did cry out with one voice and gave glory to jesus whom they both saw and heard and it came to pass that when they had all given glory unto jesus he said unto them Behold, now I finish the commandment which the Father hath commanded me concerning this people, who are a remnant of the house of Israel. Ye remember that I spake unto you, and said that when the words of Isaiah should be fulfilled, behold, they are written, ye have them before you, therefore search them. And verily, verily, I say unto you that when they shall be fulfilled, then is the fulfilling of the covenant which the father hath made unto his people o house of israel and then shall the remnants which shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth be gathered in from the east and from the west and from the south and from the north and they shall be brought to the knowledge of the lord their god who hath redeemed them and the father hath commanded me that i should give unto you this land for your inheritance and i say unto you that if the gentiles do not repent after the blessing which they shall receive after they have scattered my people then shall ye who are a remnant of the house of jacob go forth among them and ye shall be in the midst of them who shall be many and ye shall be among them as a lion among the beasts of the forest and as a young lion among the flocks of sheep who, if he goeth through, both treadeth down, and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And I will gather my people together, as a man gathereth his sheaves into the floor. For I will make my people with whom the Father hath covenanted. Yea, I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass and thou shalt beat in pieces many people and i will consecrate their gain unto the lord and their substance unto the lord of the whole earth and behold i am he who doeth it and it shall come to pass saith the father that the sword of my justice shall hang over them at that day and except they repent it shall fall upon them saith the father yea even upon all the nations of the gentiles and it shall come to pass that I will establish my people, O house of Israel. And behold, this people will I establish in this land unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. 
Behold, I am he of whom Moses spake, saying, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among the people. Verily I say unto you, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have testified of me. And behold, ye are the children of the prophets, and ye are of the house of Israel, and ye are of the covenant which the Father made with your fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. The Father, having raised me up unto you first, and sent me to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities, and this because ye are the children of the covenant. And after that ye were blessed, then fulfilleth the Father the covenant which he made with Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, under the pouring out of the Holy Ghost through me upon the Gentiles, which blessing upon the Gentiles shall make them mighty above all, under the scattering of my people, O house of Israel and they shall be a scourge unto the people of this land. Nevertheless, when they shall have received the fullness of my gospel, then, if they shall harden their hearts against me, I will return their iniquities upon their own heads, saith the Father. And I will remember the covenant which I have made with my people, and I have covenanted with them that I would gather them together in mine own due time that I would give unto them again the land of their fathers for their inheritance, which is the land of Jerusalem, which is the promised land unto them for ever, saith the Father. And it shall come to pass that the time cometh when the fullness of my gospel shall be preached unto them, and they shall believe in me that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and shall pray unto the Father in my name. Then shall their watchmen lift up their voice, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye. Then will the Father gather them together again, and give unto them Jerusalem for the land of their inheritance. Then shall they break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Father hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Father hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Father, and the Father and I are one. And then shall be brought to pass that which is written, Awake, awake, awake again, and put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that my people shall know my name, yea, in that day they shall know that I am he that doth speak. And then shall they say, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings unto them, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of them of good unto them of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. And then shall a cry go forth, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch not that which is unclean. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be your rearward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted, and extolled, and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. 
the kings shall shut their mouths at him for that which had not been told them shall they see and that which they had not heard shall they consider verily verily i say unto you all these things shall surely come even as the father hath commanded me then shall this covenant which the father hath covenanted with his people be fulfilled and then shall jerusalem be inhabited again with my people and it shall be the land of their inheritance well i if you are not a, a seasoned scriptorian or have taken measures to study these things some of this could be very confusing. Let me just continue with some of the, the study that I've done in some different resources that are that illuminated some things I had not considered. But before I forget, I want to declare who I'm dedicating this, this chapter to. And today in the news, it's January 28th, 2013, as I record this, Megan Fox, beautiful actress, stands up and talks about her having faith and her really studying revelation and even being one who speaks in tongues and she says it's you know it's called the holy ghost and it enters me and it's an interesting article i read so i thought for her to talk about and to bring to the forefront the reality of the last days and the second coming of christ through the scriptures of revelation I wanted to dedicate this scripture to her. So this is to Megan Fox. When I was studying this scripture before I recorded it, there were a few things that I just wanted to, to very quickly mention because I always seem to run out of time. And these are the things that stood out to me just as little bullet points of things that I was able to glean from this chapter. Number one, m moving from the top down, that he talked about the importance again of the sacrament and he performed a miracle to have the actual physical materials to provide a sacrament he provided bread and he provided wine for these people and they were all filled with the holy ghost by having done it so that was one thing the sacrament when you partake of it he talks about it filling your soul and it's not to fill your belly but to fill your soul which i thought is interesting and he said that you would not thirst nor hunger so that's interesting because when people have a void in their lives and they're hungering and thirsting for things, if they don't have the gospel in their lives and they don't have Christ in their hearts, they try to fill this void with anything that makes them feel or want something. But the problem with that is there's nothing else that can fill that void except for the Spirit of the Lord and for the feeling of wanting to love and serve your fellow man nothing will fill that void you can try it with a new car new clothes food anything that people become addicted to alcohol shopping traveling all the things that you think oh my gosh these things will make me so happy they make me feel good but nothing fills that void and that is by design because we are divine children of God and he places within us that desire to know of him and to learn of him and I thought that was a significant principle that I got from this chapter also to pray in your heart he tells them to stop praying but to keep praying in their heart and it's I think it's significant to know that we can pray anywhere at any time if you're on the freeway and you're driving you can pray and you can be in a in a classroom situation if you're taking a test and you can pray in your heart and he asks us to continually pray and you can pray all day long and keep the lord as your companion all day long and talk to him all day long but because he they were actually talking with him because he was there in their presence uh, you know what the, what is prayer when you're talking about prayer you're talking with god and you're having this divine communication so it's kind of an interesting thought what if he was actually standing in front of you would your conversation with him be divine as it is as when you pray 
Uh, some people who are without faith, they consider themselves atheists, and they say, yeah, I'm not going to talk to some crazy thing in the sky. Well, what if he was standing right in front of you? Would that be crazy? <laughs> Would that be weird that, you know, you have this actual being in front of you? And when you talk to God, you're having a divine communication. So that's another thing I wanted to put out there. Um, also, he talks about fulfilling the covenants. This is huge because, again, this will read instead of as a prophecy that he talks about being fulfilled. That one day this will be like history because it has been fulfilled. That's another thing I pulled out of it is that the Lord always, always fulfills his covenants. And man may try to thwart his efforts to have all these things come to pass, but nothing will stop the work. Nothing will stop the work. In fact, we have great evidences of the Lord hastening his work. And I did mention in my last recording about the Lord hastening his work, but I wanted to have a little follow-up on that if you're uh, listening on a daily basis with me. I went to the Los Angeles temple on Saturday and we went to a 1.30 p.m. session. And I swear I have never seen so many people in a single session. And it was something to behold. And there were some things that were different about it than other sessions I have been to. Uh, there are, there, okay, usually when I go to the temple, they maybe have, you know, the first time that you go to the temple, if you've never, ever been, uh, mo the first time you go, you go to receive your own endowment or gift from the Lord, and you go to receive instructions of what to do after this life as you um, return to Heavenly Father, what to do. And so the first time that you go, you go for yourself. And after that, every time after that, you go in behalf or in proxy for someone who has already passed away. And when you're new, it's your first time going, they put, they pin on you a little, an actual little tag, like you're in kindergarten class. And you sit in the very front and if you're a guy, they pin on you a little blue tag. And if you're a woman, they pin on you a pink tag. And you're allowed to have an escort with you. And they also have little tags pinned on them. And that is as an indicator that, number one, they're going to sit in the front. And number two, they're going to have special assistance, that they'll have someone there to guide them through the experience. Well this particular time instead of having you know two or three people like they i have normally seen there were like rows two three rows of young people who were going for themselves for the first time and their uh, escorts who had been through previously and when um we were standing in a prayer circle around the altar in the temple. There's usually, you know, eight or ten couples who go up there. And this time there were so many we couldn't fit around without going down the stairs. There's, a, there's an altar that were at this particular temple. I've been in other ones where there's not. But at this particular one in Los Angeles, you can probably see pictures on it if you Google it. It has a... Um, uh, like a platform and then two stairs that lead up to it and so we had to go down the stairs and around it, w it there were so many people I just couldn't believe it and they were young you know they were young people and that with along the coupling of the article in um I think it was church news or something that they talked about young people doing work for uh, preparing paperwork for their ancestors is is a clear evidence that the Lord is hastening his work and he's having young people uh, fulfill the 
promise or the prophecy that is given in Malachi where their hearts will turn to the fathers and the fathers will turn to the children. And it was really something to witness it firsthand. That was amazing. Um, also, he mentions, and there are several themes here about gathering of Israel. He also says, again, to uh, heed the words of Isaiah and read the scriptures. He says, you have them. So, yes, refer to those. And gathering of Israel, which is, it's exciting. I mean, we are, I am, you are, we are living in the day when we will see this take place. I think uh, as we see all of the signs pointed to in Revelation and other prophecies about the second coming. He mentions all the prophets from Samuel down talk about this. And even the prophets from before testify of him coming, but not always as his second coming. So that's why he mentions it from Samuel on down. Then he goes on to give the imagery of the sword of justice. And a sword can be an offensive or a defensive thing. And I thought that's a very, very powerful imagery of the sword of justice. Also, there's some things mentioned in here about Israel, the actual land of Israel and Jerusalem. And in this day and age, there is so much. It's, this, it's just such a controversy about Israel itself and forever it it will be until the Lord comes again and claims the rightful place as the leader, basically, of the world. Nobody's going to vote on it. There's not going to be politics involved. He will just simply come and take his rightful place there. And the people of Israel who know that the Lord keeps his covenants, that's what gives them hope and that's what gives them faith. Because on all sides of them, all signs would indicate that they're just not going to make it. In fact, it was interesting because last night I saw an episode on Netflix streaming of The the West Wing, which is a dramatization of a, a president of the United States and all of his staff. And, and his assistant, whose name is Charlie, he gave him this map from back, back, clear back in the day so when the United States wasn't even recognized because it didn't exist, that Israel wasn't on the map. And it, he was given such flack because he wanted to hang it because Israel wasn't recognized there either. It wasn't formed. And I don't know, it was kind of interesting that even back in the day, there has been controversy surrounding Israel. There was another thing that I found in a commentary from Elder John Morgan, which I've never heard of him before. But as I was Googling 3rd Nephi 20, his thing popped up. And he, like Leon Skousen, who talks about uh, the scriptures verse by verse, did the same thing and, and I was going down it was very interesting about gosh a couple of things that he mentioned about being clean that it is important to be clean and there's a quote from I think it was from Spencer W. Kimball I'm I'm you know there's so much to scroll down here but he talked about being clean and even that your your body is clean that you put on clean clothing and you know, you eat clean food. And boy, I can attest to that. I had some food that was called soul food this weekend and I just felt dirty after eating it. I said, I just can't eat food like that. It was just not good. Then again here, this is interesting in verse 36, when, when it's said to put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, he says this, I love how he says this, spiritually speaking, Israel has worn rags and eaten dust long enough. Now is the time for her to come forth and assume the dignity and power that were once hers and the right to the lineage, the authority of the priesthood, put on their strength, break the curses of, of God and take the place. And I think that's a really powerful thing to live up to the wonderful uh, inheritance that the Lord has provided for us. Walk with your heads high. Know that you're loved and honored. And that's why, you know, in, in my in my last several decades of my life, I have been a, a person who I do that. I ask women to take care of themselves and to dress like women and to smell like women and look like women. We have so many women who try to look like men and, and uh, dishonor their femininity in the name of feminism that I think it's a mistake 
They think we're made differently for a reason. And gender matters. If it didn't matter, the Lord wouldn't have made us different. So that's another thing I wanted to add about this. Gordon B. Hinckley had this to say about being clean. Be clean. Be clean in your thoughts. It is not easy in the environment in which you live. But if you work at it, you can do it. You can shut out those influences which destroy your soul, your spirituality, and can destroy your very life. The sleaze, the filth, the terrible pornography that is sweeping over the earth like a flood. Stay away from it. Do not rent videos of a sleazy, filthy nature and sit around and look at them. They will destroy you. Do not go to shows which will tear down your principles. Do not read literature which will destroy your high ideals. You are a son or daughter of God, and he expects marvelous things of you. One more. Charles Penrose. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. The Lord expects young men of Israel to be pure and virtuous in their conduct, just as much as he requires it of the daughters of Israel. The Lord has brought us into these mountains that we may raise up a holy generation, a peculiar people. The strength of this people is in their comparative purity and their righteousness and their sincerity. They are not a set of hypocrites. Well, as expected, I know this time <laughs> just flew by with this chapter, but there's a if there's a great article, I mean, of of Elder John Morgan all the way down where he he mirrors the time of the savior to the time of Moses coming in and letting God fight the battles, an actual battle. Many gospel scholars have described the similarities between the mission of Moses and the mortal mission of Christ as and as Moses as a type and shadow of Christ. Did not Moses save Israel from the most powerful military force on the earth? Will not Christ save Israel from an army assembled from all nations? Was not Moses the lawgiver for Israel? Will not Christ dispense the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and the law of the Lord from Zion? He offered all of those things. And a lot of times we don't think about Moses' delivery of the children of Israel in apocalyptic terms, but we should. Moses' delivery of children of Israel is the same kind of a type of Christ's delivery of Israel from a besieging army. And that's one of the cool things that... Um, Morgan talks about in his in his laying out each verse by verse and he compares the plagues of Egypt to the apocalyptic destruction of the wicked so that's definitely worth a look at so thank you so much for joining me and we will continue the next time with third Nephi chapter 19 have a wonderful day Bye.